Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Today we will be continuing in our beginner friendly series of calibrating and upgrading our Voxelab IKEAs. As well, and very importantly, understanding why we're doing these calibrations. Today's video will be the E-step or the extrusion step calibration. Now it sounds intimidating, but it requires no software, only a set of flush cutters in addition to the tools you already have. And it's only going to take about 10 minutes of your time. Now there's a few ways to calibrate it. I'm going to show you two. I prefer the first method because I believe you get a better baseline and more consistency. But as I go over both, I'll explain the pros and I'll explain the cons. So what are E-steps? E-steps is the number that we give our extruder motor so that it rotates the correct amount per minute in order to feed the amount of filament we ask for. So right here, I have off a machine, a stepper motor. This is similar to the motor that's on our IKEAs. How this works is your filament gets introduced into the extruder. It gets grabbed by the tooth gear on the motor, which rotates and pulls the filament forward eventually bringing it into the PDF tubing, down through your hot end, and out your nozzle. So, if I was to ask my printer right now to extrude 100 millimeters of filament, would it do that? Would it give me more? 105 millimeters? Would it give me less, maybe? 93 millimeters? Now, those are small deviations, but consider the effect it has on a 4-hour print, an 8-hour print, an 18-hour print. Those errors compound themselves. So, what we're looking to do is take that unknown off the table. So when we ask for 100 millimeters to be extruded, that's exactly what we get. So the first step is to unload any filament you have in the machine. Obviously, I don't have any, I've already done that step, but if you have it, what you wanna do is bring your nozzle up to temperature, whatever your printing temperature for that particular filament is, 200, 205, no doubt, somewhere around there. Once you see a little bit of the filament leaking out, that means that temperature is probably good in order to pull the filament out. So you come around behind the machine, you depress your extruder, extruder arm and you slowly remove that filament. You'll notice I have a 3D printed knob right here. You can also use one of these. It's a really good upgrade. I highly recommend it. So you'll depress the extruder arm and then you'll twist the extruder to uh, get it out. This is a really cool tool. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to print this out. So once we have the filament unloaded, if you had to bring your nozzle up to temperature, leave it at that temperature. If you didn't have to unload filament at this time, this is when you're going to want to bring your nozzle up to temperature. We can't push any filament through the extruder unless the nozzle is at printing temperature. So the first thing we're going to do, take off this pneumatic coupler right here. Uh, as you can see, mine is not stock. I had issues with the stock one that came in the box. It was giving me some stringing issues. Uh, I replaced it with this and I haven't had a problem since. So, take the coupler off, and then the next thing we're going to do is load in our filament, and this is where the Voxelab filament shines, really, the one that came with your machine. Now, I don't recommend printing with this filament, running calibration tests and such with it is really a really good idea because the quality of prints might not be high, but you still get the quality of calibration just the same. So, we're going to introduce our filament. push it through, depress the arm, push it all the way through, and now there you go. You see our filament moving right here. This is the time where flush cutters really come in handy. Hopefully you've picked some up. Uh, if not, buy a brand new printer. Hopefully they come with it. So you take your flush cutters, go right to the, flush them up right against the mouth of the extruder, and then clip. So right, that, right now, that is flush. What we'll do now is we'll send 100 millimeters from our LCD screen for this extruder motor to push out. We'll clip it, we'll measure it, and we'll see if we got 100 millimeters out of it. Okay, so we are in dark mode here. I thought it would be better to see the LCD screen. We're gonna start in control, head on down to move, and then we go down past the X, Y, and Z axis to the extruder. We click on that, and we scroll the number all the way to 100, and then we click OK. Now in this next step, we're going to see a fast-forwarded version of the printer extruding the 100 millimeters of filament. 
I just wanted to show you yet another advantage of having this 3D printed knob. It helps visualize exactly what that extruder motor is doing. So right now in real time, this motor was moving very, very slow. It was, very, it was hard to even see the speed it was going. You put the knob on and now you can see exactly how fast it's moving. Now this is a real boon when you are actually printing a 3D model. You can see the retractions, you can see the speed of the extruder. So it gives you more options than just introducing and taking out filament. So we're all finished. There's a measurement. Don't look at the number on the caliper. I'm using it just as a measuring stick. It measured it to about 98 millimeters. So I'm just shy of our 100 millimeter mark. So we're going to plug it into a formula. The first thing we need to do is get the current E-step value. By doing that, to do that, we go into settings, into motion, down to steps per millimeter, and then all the way uh, to the bottom past X, Y, and Z to E, which is extruder. And right there, you'll get our number. It's 93.0. So that's our current E-step value. So here's our formula, how much we wanted to extrude. So we chose to extrude 100 millimeters. We divide that by how much we actually extruded. Now I measured 98 millimeters. So we take A, how much we wanted, we divide it by B, how much we actually got. And we get C, which is the variance. And that came out to 1.020408. So now we take C from the top, our variance, 1.020408, and we multiply it by our current E-step value. That's the number we just got. 93.0. So when we multiply C by our current E-step value, it's going to give us our new E-step value, 94.897959. We're going to round it up. It's going to be 94.9. So now we need to store this in the printer. So we're going to go to the screen we were just at, where we had the 93.0 steps per millimeter. Click on it, adjust it upward to 94.9, click it again, and now it's saved in our printer. We're going to go back to the move menu and we're going to extrude another 100 millimeters of filament through the machine. So fast forward version of this and there we have it, 100 millimeters on the dot. So while we did save it into the printer, if we were to turn it off right now and turn it back on, it would have blanked that and it would come back to the previously saved E-step which was 93. So we need to go back in the setting menu now that we have the proper one. We go down to motion, we go down to steps per millimeter, all the way down past the E to store configuration. We click the button, we hear a loud beep, and now it is stored. So this is an alternate version of the calibration. This requires us to actually feed filament through the extruder and extrude it through the nozzle. So right there, I clipped it at an angle, I released tension on my extruder arm, and I introduced filament into the machine. I'm now using that 3D printed nozzle for its mostly uh, used purpose, which is advancing the filament through the Bowden tube through the end of the nozzle. My nozzle has been preheated. Once I feel a little bit of resistance, I can see the filaments coming out. I take whatever little filaments dangling off, get it out of there. And now I'm going to find a marker. I use a dry erase marker. It's easy to get off the filament. You can use a Sharpie. And then we're going to get a measuring stick. So we place the the ruler or measuring stick directly against the extruder and we measure out two markings 100 millimeters and 110 millimeters so the reason we do that is if we over extrude and we extrude past 100 we have a separate marking to denote exactly how far we've gone so those are my two markings at 110 100 and 110 millimeters and now we're going to do a fast forward of it, of it extruding now that's one of the reasons i kind of don't prefer this method the measuring of the ruler against the side and bending the filament down. It can be a little awkward and then you have to use your Sharpie marker or your dry erase marker and make the two dots, which can be slightly inaccurate. Um, so I, I don't prefer this. I really prefer cutting it flush directly against the extruder and then cutting it flush again and you get a really easy measurement. So we are just about finished. We've extruded 100 millimeters. The one good thing about this is I don't need to cut it. I just go down there and re-measure it with the uh, measuring stick. So I can see my marks haven't gone through. I know I'm under extruding. I go down there, I measure it, and I am only about exactly what I was last time. I, I fed through about 98 millimeters of filament. So now this is with our current E-step. So we're at 94.9 currently, and I'm still under extruding through the nozzle because this is now extruding through my extruder, my Bowden tube, and my hot end and my nozzle. So I erase those two markings and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to measure at 100 millimeters and I'm going to measure at 110 millimeters. I'm going to make a mark at each of those numbers. I'm then going to reintroduce the numbers I just got into our formula. So we asked for 100. We got 98. I'll get my variance. 
1.020408. I will times that by our current E-step, 94.9, and we get somewhere around 99%. This time, however, I extruded exactly 100 millimeters. It looked very, very good, and that is showing it. Folks, that's it. Our E-steps are properly calibrated. So in simple terms, what did we do? We removed the PTFE tubing, we snipped the filament, we extruded 100 millimeters, we snipped the filament again, we measured it. Was it 100 millimeters? If it was, great, you're done. If it wasn't, we plugged those numbers into our formula and we started the whole process over again. It's that simple. Don't let the length of this video scare you. Most of it was me just describing the minutia of this whole process. But now, does our journey end here? Well, it certainly could. I mean, we know we're getting 100 millimeters out of our extruder, but are we getting the same number out of our nozzle? Now for that, we're going to take a look in our slicing software and see what's going on. Okay, here we are in Cura. This is the slicing profile I use. I have my IKEA, Voxeleb IKEA profile selected. You will, however, notice that my base plate is an Ender design. That is because all I've done is taken an Ender 3 Pro uh, profile that came with Cura, and I use it for my Voxeleb IKEA. It is perfectly suited perfectly well for it. It actually has given me no problems, and I actually prefer it over trying to customize my own profile. It's so much simpler. Up at the top here, I have a 0.4 nozzle equipped. That is what comes default on your IKEA. Over here, infill is 20% and 0.2 layer height. Those really aren't too important. What is important, we're going to go through custom, two settings, quality and shell, and under quality, we want the line width right here to match our nozzle size, which is 0.4. So 0.4, 0.4, that is perfect. Okay, go back out of quality into shell. Now for our wall line count, we want that to be 2 which would then bring our wall thickness to 0.8. So if we have two walls at 0.4 thickness, a piece, then the obvious total of those, 0.4 and 0.4, is 0.8. These are all very important numbers. These all need to look just like mine because what we're going to do is we're going to bring in a 3D model. I have it linked in the description of the video. And it is a hollowed out cube with no top. And guess what? Every single one of those walls is two lines each, which means it is 0.8 millimeters thick. We go down here to slice. We slice it, which turns this model into readable code by our printer. Then we're going to go down here to preview. And here we go. Each wall, two lines apiece, two, two, and two. That's exactly what we want to see. So when we print this model, after we're done, we'll take a set of calipers, we'll measure each side, and we'll try and make sure we get 0.8 thickness on each side. If we don't, we'll adjust our flow. And then we'll do the process over and over until our extruder steps and our flow match. Okay, so here's the first side of our cube, 0 0.8. The second side of our cube, 0 0.8. Can it be? Possibly. I'm going to give you another angle. That's a 0 0.8 uh, wall width. And finally, oh no, 0 0.7. Okay, it had to happen, right? So now there's another formula to adjust this. We take the wall width of what we were looking for, which is 0 0.8. And then we're going to divide that by the average width of what we got. So we add up all the sides, we divide it by 4, and that gave us 0 0.775. So when we divide the width by our average, we get 1.03. We move that decimal point over two spots, and that gives us our new flow percentage. Okay, here we are back in Cura. I have my IKEA profile selected. I'm going to go through the custom icon to material. Scroll down to find flow. Head across, and in the appropriate box, enter our new flow percentage. And that's basically it. Um, is there room for improvement, room for different tweaking of settings? I mean, obviously, yes. Look at all the different settings down below here. Now, what we've done with a small amount of effort, a small amount of work, we've made a tremendous improvement in our print quality and our consistency going forward. So now what we're going to want to do is print out another cube using these settings, measure it again, if it is 0 0.8 on each side, boom, you are good to go. If not, use the formula we just went over, plug the numbers in, adjust the flow percentage accordingly, and keep trying until you have a cube that measures 0 0.8 on each side. Okay, and here's the cube off the printer. 0 0.8 walls on each side, so we know our flow is properly calibrated. Our E-steps are already done. We are finished. It's that simple. So what did we learn? We learned that E-steps is the number that determines how much filament is going to be fed from our machine. We then learn how to calibrate that number so that we know we're getting the proper amount of filament during each print. We then went into our slicer and we learned how to adjust the flow so that we can curate that setting 
for each filament, nozzle, or even temperature change. I really hope you learned something today. If you did, please like the video, subscribe. I plan on having a few more videos aligned with this series, some beginner tips and tricks, as well as some diagnostic tools for the Voxa Lab IKEA. I'm actually finishing up a video right now for PID tuning as well as thermistor replacement. I also have a video upcoming where I replace the original plastic extruder with a dual gear extruder. It's an awesome upgrade. It's very cheap right now too because the plastic extruder that comes on the machine isn't the best. It will fail over time. So getting a new extruder on there, especially a dual gear run, a dual gear one rather, that can do, uh, perform prints with flexible filaments, which is actually what's happening behind us, is leagues ahead of what we have on there now. It's an awesome video. So I hope you stick around. Like I said, subscribe so when it comes out, you're notified. Um, and until next time, guys and girls, keep printing.